Mumbo was seen here around four times yesterday. So we hope we can get lucky and hopefully rescue this Mumbo out of this residential home and uh, get the snake safe and get the people safe. <laughs> Oh, there it is. It's up there. Oh, it's yeah, up it's there. there. It's there. Yeah, it's up I, there. I see it. It's a decent size, eh? No, oh, it's a very wow. decent size. Mamba number one. Amazing. <laughs> Big black mamba, around 2.1 meters. Had to clear almost half the storeroom, but ended up getting it out, and now it's gonna head home into a safer environment. People are safe, snake is safe, so we're all happy. Very, very cool. Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today's a very exciting day and a very exciting episode to be able to show you guys this incredible species. This is one of the most feared species and it's a flagship species for venomous snakes around the world. Other than the king cobra, the black mamba is probably one of the most revered snakes in the world and everyone knows about it. So there's gonna be a little bit of a process to get the snake out of its tub and to get it to be in a workable condition. These guys are really, really fast, reactive snakes so I'm gonna to have to let the snake calm down a little bit before I can actually work it, maybe get it on a hook, use my tongs, but tongs are last resort. Mamas don't like to be confined and be held. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we have the infamous black mamba, Dendra aspis polylapis, an amazing species of snake, highly feared around Africa because of its very highly neurotoxic venom the extremely long snake, up to about 2.5 meters on average, and up to about three meters in length. And the really big ones will get to about four meters, but just like your old tuskers, your old big elephants, the big, big mambas have probably all been hunted out and no longer exist. This amazing snake has actually got a really bad reputation. It's unfortunately extremely lethal and very toxic. So if you're bitten by the snake in a rural area, chances are you're not gonna make it. The symptoms can pop up after envenomation of about 10 minutes. You start feeling symptoms, tingly mouth, drowsiness, your eyelids start drooping, you start salivating from the mouth and between three to seven hours later, you can be in real problems. And if you don't get antivenom for this snake, it will probably be lethal. Now, envenomations vary from around 120 milligrams of venom, which is a rather large venom yield, and up to about 400 in really, really large mambas, but that's a really, really rare case. Now, these snakes have got extremely potent neurotoxin. They actually don't have any sort of cytotoxin or any sort of pain-related toxin inside their venom, meaning when you get bit by these guys, there's actually not much pain at all. There's no swelling and it's not really painful. There's a little bit of tingling sensation, but apart from that, it literally attacks your cardiovascular system and your heart. So these guys, after about 10, 15 minutes, you start feeling the symptoms. Depending how big you are as a person, the venom can dilute, but in really small people, you can die within probably an hour or two, and in extremely big people, up between seven to about 15 hours before it becomes fatal. So these guys are distributed around most of Sub-Saharan Africa, occurring all the way up from Somalia, across to Burkina Faso and Cameroon, down to Mozambique, South Africa, Namibia, Botswana. They're both terrestrial and arboreal, and are found in mostly dry environments, but are found in adjacent to thickly dense forests. I mean, out here in Durban, they occur in quite heavily dense vegetation, up into Namibia where they're occurring in almost desert-like environments. Now you can see the snake just wants to climb up and get away from me. Hasn't tried to bite yet. Hasn't done any sort of display 
of its mouth, which is usually why it's called a black mamba, is because of the black mouth. It's actually not the coloration of the skin, but it was originally back in the day called black mambas because large adults, which were your really, really old specimens, would actually be able to get to about four meters, actually got blacker and blacker. There's quite a bit of variability in these snakes. They range from about an olive green to grays to brownish colors to this gunmetal gray. Now you can see she's changed quite a bit from the, the top of her body, which is more of a bullet gray, to almost a completely black tail. In 2016, there was a genetic study done, conducted between mambas, and the eastern green and black mamba are much closely related than the Jamesons, which is a little bit more of a distinct species. So these guys must have diverged with together, the green and the black, and then the western and Jamesons mamba went the other way. They also hood up their necks for like a cobra display, but she's not doing it at the moment because she's a good little Eva. There you go, there's a bit of a display. Look at her, she's looking at the GoPro and she doesn't like that object in close vicinity. Now in the wild, black mambas don't generally let humans get closer than, than 40 meters. Generally, they'll see a human and they go down a hole in a tree hollow and escape human beings. There's actually very few bite cases of these snakes. If you were to put this against Mozambique spitting cobras, stiletto snakes and puff adders, mambas don't even come close in terms of the amount of bites and fatalities that the other snakes are inflicting. So these guys really do have a bad reputation and due to modern science and technology and antivenom that is super effective, bites from these snakes, if you're near a hospital and have access to antivenom, is actually very effective. I'd rather get bit by a snake like this knowing that I have antivenom nearby than a puff adder which will cause necrosis and probably lifetime damage on your body or scarring or loss of limb. These snakes are very fond of warm-blooded creatures. They prey items, they prefer fledgling birds, small rats and mice, and once they get a little bit larger, they'll be feeding on dussies and little bush babies and even small vervet monkeys and things like that. They are known to eat other things, bats and stuff like that, but as a rule of thumb, they do like and prefer rodent and mammalian prey. Due to their extremely potent digestive system, mamas can actually digest their food between eight to 10 hours after feeding on them, which is incredible. It shows you how the venom is already breaking down the proteins and then has a really strong hydrochloric acid in its stomach to be able to break down its meals. Fully grown black mambas don't have many predators at all. Pretty much the only things that will be feeding on a really large black mamba are birds of prey and crocodilians. Your brown snake eagles are known to take these guys. Even specimens of up to 2.3 meters have been seen eaten by brown snake eagles. Marshall eagles are opportunists and pretty much eat anything they can. So a mamba would easily go down for a marshal as well as tawny eagles. Then mongoose and honey badgers actually have a resistance to black mamba venom. So I'm sure honey badgers and mongoose would eat smaller sized mambas or if they got really brave, take out a big mamba. So amazing, amazing snake. You can see how long she is. She's probably 2.3 meters. So this is already a nice size mamba, but so mambas grow really, really fast, believe it or not. So after their first year, they can reach about 1.8 meters and then they slow down their growth. And I would say the average mamba nowadays is between two to 2.5 meters and a really large specimens around three to 3.5. And then your rare giants at around four meters. I think your whole four, 4.5 meter mambas are almost non-existent nowadays, which is really unfortunate because to see a 4.5 meter mamba would be a real, real sight to see. Now reproduction takes place during the summer months where a male will approach a female and at that point he'll approach her, he'll tongue flick in and around her body. If she's receptive, she'll go very relaxed and she won't move. She'll then raise up her tail if she's receptive and happy to accept him. And then at that point, copulation will take place. Once copulation takes place, they'll sit still for about two hours. Whilst they copulate, the male will occasionally do some spasms, but they relax quite heavily. When you see male combat, which male combat does occur in these species, which is rolling around each other, trying to pin each other down, 
A lot of people will think that that's mating. Mating is a lot more gentle in snakes than the male combat. So if you ever see two snakes winding around each other, that's male combat. Black mamba females generally have between seven to 17 eggs, but uh, Nick Evans has just had a clutch of 20 eggs, which is supposedly a record for Durban area and for black mambas. So that's really, really interesting. Again, amazing snakes to be respected and not feared. Keep away from them if you can. If they enter your households, etc., please call your local snake catcher. Don't try and remove it yourself. These snakes are extremely alert and active snakes, but they're also very shy and very reclusive snakes and are very, very quick to use that burst of speed that a lot of people know mambas are famous for. Now, mambas are also over-exaggerated in terms of the speed they can reach. A lot of people say it's up to like 25, 30 kilometers an hour. Supposedly it's only around 16 k's an hour and that's for really, really short bursts of speed. So you could easily outrun a mamba, not that a mamba would ever chase you, but just walk away gently, leave the mamba alone and it will generally escape out or move away from you. So there you have it folks, this is the infamous black mamba, but to be honest, it's actually a really amazing snake to work with. We've worked with three of them so far and None of them have been aggressive towards us. All they've wanted to do is get away from us. And very little defensive mechanisms and very little defensive displays. Almost no striking, unless we're putting the GoPro pretty much in her face. So wow, amazing privilege to work with this snake. And on that note, thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please do hit the subscribe button, hit that notifications bell, and remember to stand for what we stand on.